Hey guys, it's DC here and welcome to The Daily Hack. So today in the news, we have cyber criminals capitalize on COVID-19 fears, push shady websites, pharmaceuticals. So here's a figure of uh, different uh, drug related phishing domains that have been created. And the article here says, Norm Shield researchers looked for websites using the names of 10 commonly discussed drugs over the last several months. They found a dramatic spike in the number of sites generated to get the attention of scared shoppers looking for coronavirus cures, which there is none of, just by the way. In the first three months of 2020 alone, the researchers found 362 new possible phishing domains with references to or containing exact names of 10 medicines. Remdesivir, chloroquine, and a lot of other ones that I cannot pronounce. Of those 362 sites, 221 or 61% of them had domain names that contained either chloroquine or azimithricin. While the number of phishing domains catapulted for chloroquine and this other drug in particular, domain names containing the eight other drugs increased as well. This is the beginning of a larger problem. When you see the site being created, it tells us the bad guys see an opportunity and are looking to exploit people, said Paul Paget, CEO of Norm Shield. The president, Elon Musk, many other world leaders are discussing drugs, hoping they provide some options to the sick, the scared and the uh, medical community. Threat actors are looking to insert themselves into this process and profit from it. Norm Shield's CSO Bob Maley added, we see some of the sites already being used offering these drugs. The sites might only be active for a few hours, but then they come down after the operator makes a quick hit, preying on consumers at opportune times. Some of these sites have a padlock, giving the consumer the impression that they are safe, but they are not. The padlock that he's referring to is this little uh, SSL certificate here that says that this site is secured. Um, that doesn't actually mean it's secure, but anyway. I'll, uh, I'll leave a link in the description to this article because it's pretty interesting and uh, maybe you can try and pronounce some of those drug names. Next article, Cisco, Altistar and Worldwide Technology to accelerate deployment of 4G, 5G open RAN solutions. So for all of you people out there who are scared of 5G, this might not be a good article for you to read. It might be a little bit scary. So Cisco and Altistar, an innovator in open virtual RAN or VRAN, technology and worldwide technology or WWT, a market leading $12 billion technology solution provider announced the companies are working together on an open VRAN blueprint that will accelerate the deployment of 4G, 5G open RAN solutions in service provider networks, which is basically every uh, ISP in the world. The combined solution will help service providers deploy fully integrated open cloud-based virtual RAN solutions based on technologies created by Cisco and uh, Alt, Altio Star, and that will be brought to market using the sales integration and deployment capabilities of WWT. Innovation in mobile networking and open virtualized RAN is continuing at rapid pace. Most service providers need help accelerating the integration and adoption of open VRAN to realize these benefits we are helping to eliminate this gap and enable operators to adopt new open architectures to increase their competitiveness. Now, I can tell you exactly why this reason is, and it's not going to say in this article, but it's because Huawei has already figured out how to do this. And uh, the governments of the world don't want to buy Huawei for whatever reason. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure that someone has said to Cisco, and uh, Altio Star and WWT, that if you guys can figure this out and create your own solution that works just as well or better, that would be fantastic. Here's a whole load of money to do that research. Have a look at the article here. It, um, it looks pretty interesting. I'll leave a link in the description. The next news article here is large email extortion campaign underway. Don't panic. A large email extortion campaign is underway telling recipients that their computer was hacked. This again and that a video was taken through the hacked computer's webcam. This has been going on forever. The attackers then demand $1,900 in bitcoins or the video will be sent to family and friends. Bleeping Computer has been reporting on these scams since the summer of 2018. Yeah, exactly, they've been going on for ages. 
uh, when they started to be sent by scammers. While many would disregard these emails, some have been so concerned that a video would leak that they sent payments to the scammers. In the first week that these extortion emails began to be sent out, concerned recipients sent over $50,000 worth of bitcoins to the attackers, which is roughly 50 people, right? Almost, well, maybe a little bit less than 50. Since then, threat actors have created different types of email extortion scams, including one that pretends to be hitman contracts, bomb threats, CIA investigations, threats of installing ransomware, and just recently, threats to infect your family with the coronavirus. Yeah, uh, okay. Today's campaign revisits old campaign. In today's email extortion campaign, the attackers have gone back to basics and have started emailing people stating that their computers were hacked, a video was taken using their webcam, and that they know their passwords. The listed passwords are in many cases actual passwords used by the recipient in the past, but the attacker does not know them by hacking your account, but rather through leaked data breaches shared online. Due to today's campaign, Bleeping Computer began to receive numerous emails from recipients where they shared samples of the extortion emails being sent. So I actually had a lot of calls from some family friends and some family as well uh, for this exact type of attack um, and they were very concerned. They, you know, a lot of people maybe did have these sort of videos on their uh, computer and um, then they got this virus and they got freaked out so it's yeah it's just a scam it's always a scam and um yeah here's an example of one of the uh emails they're all pretty much exactly the same i've seen so many of these now it's not even funny but hey whatever Alrighty, heading over to tryhackme.com i have a look at the leaderboard here for the month we have rick sanchez 0137 still out in first place but his lead is getting smaller. We've got ZT3R1 in second place with 16,200 points. You're getting close, mate. A little bit further to go and you'll overtake Rick Sanchez who came out strong at the start of the month here. Third place, Free Soul. Fourth place, Dev Hommel. Fifth place, Sysmex73. Uh, um, I don't see our friend Wizard Alfredo in here. Uh, yet, but who knows, maybe he'll uh, kick off and come in for a late win in the month. Okay, over to the comments section of yesterday's video. We have a couple of questions here. One's from Vraj Rana who says, Hey DC, I've watched a few of your videos and I want to do a MS in cybersecurity in the USA. Any university recommendations for this particular field? I'm from India. And thanks for the information. Uh, yeah, WGU, uh, which I can't remember what it stands for. They do an online course. Um, Western Governors University. This one here. Um, they do an online course that I've heard really great things about. Um, so yeah, maybe check that out and uh, have a look. I'll, uh, I might actually just comment here while I'm here. Next uh, sort of question is from Grand Mods. There's a lot of 13 year olds in the DDoSing community who scan for IoT devices using exports, but I don't understand what they're really doing. What they're probably doing is going to a service called Shodan and uh, logging in there, finding uh, lots of devices on the internet, scanning them for any vulnerabilities, and then uh, maybe DDoSing them from a DDoS service, but I doubt it. But that's probably uh, how I would go about it if it was me. Hoo Ha Extreme says, good morning, off subject. Question, do Australians like Foster beer? I think the last time I drank it was in Dubai in 1993. And I said, nope, it's actually hard to buy. And that's true. You, um, you can't really buy Fosters here in any uh, bottle shop. They just don't sell it. And the few times I have had it, it's been at like international events. Like the last time I had it was, uh, I think it was like 2006 or 2005. I was at the Melbourne uh, Formula One Grand Prix and they did sell Fosters there and I was blown away. I'd never heard of Fosters. I thought I was like, oh wow, okay, yeah, let's try it. And it tasted terrible. It's a terrible beer. I don't like it. It tastes like American beer, <laughs> which um, I'm sure a few of you aren't going to like that comment. But yeah, it, it tastes like bud to me, so I'm not a big fan. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all the questions from the last video. So uh, yeah, let's wrap this one up. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions for uh, my next daily hack, which will be on Monday. And uh, yeah, I'll see you there.
Catch you later, guys.